trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Do you have him black? This looks black, wouldn't you say? All things considered, one cup of percolated coffee, black. You always have white. Not today I'm having black. Well, would it be tactless to ask why? Because I fancy it. Something wrong here? Come on, what's up? Nothing. You look like an undertaker who's lost a coat. Very nice. Quinn, happy returns on so much love on this milestone day. Your loving husband. Jack. Host. What's so important? All for you? Bill, for you. Fan mail? Perhaps. Oh, my God. It's your birthday. It's my birthday. And I forgot. If you say so. Come for my mother. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I clean forgot. One from my auntie in Blackpool. You're not really upset, are you? Hell. One from Annie. Well, it's only a birthday. Police women don't have birthdays, that's it. Well, why don't you remind me? I've been dropping heavy great hints for weeks on end. The least I expected was a nice morning cuddle and many happy returns. What did I get in fact? Complaints about your armpits. My armpits? You know what I mean. Oh, gee, I feel terrible about this. I really do. <laughs> For what it's worth, happy birthday. Oh, come on. I know you're having me on. Stop keeping me in suspense. No, honestly, I'm... Stop play-acting, will you? You know how much I like birthdays. Look, I forgot! You're kidding me! Oh, pure and simple, I forgot! You mean you really have forgotten? Yeah. Right. Oh, come on, don't be like that. I shall say no more. Just don't go rushing off to buy up some fancy card and a gift wrap bottle of perfume, that's all. Won't there be no point? Because I shan't be interested. Yes, well, it's too late for that, isn't it? The moment's passed. Exactly. What am I kissing you for? Is this goodbye? See ya. Well, aren't you giving me a lift to work? No, I'm not. Oh, dear. Morning. Morning, love. It's not Armistice Day, is it? Well, that's on a Sunday, Mum, usually. Oh, uh, I thought we were having the two minutes silence. Nice day, Mum. Is it? Well, I met the weather, Mum. Crisp and bright. Autumn sunlight over the hills. I went for a walk early this morning and listened to the dawn chorus. I see. I think I need a cup of tea. David, would you make one? Certainly, Mum. That would be very good. No sugar. Thank you. Oh. Oh. You awful lot of babies. 
beggars. You remembered how smashing. Many happy returns, Mum. A little cake. I'm quite touched. On the question of the cake, Mum, you won't be wanting it all to yourself, will you? We'll polish it off over David's tea, shall we? Good thinking. And if I might say so, Mum, you still don't look a day over 38. Cut the cake, shall we? Uh, no, thanks. No, I'm just looking there. It's just that you uh, seem very interested in me and what I'm doing. Did I? I don't particularly like being stared at. Naturally. Look, I hope it's not terribly rude, but uh, what possible concern is my shopping of yours? Well, it's certainly my concern, but I'm not surprised you put out. No doubt I've interrupted your activities. What? You understand me, I'm sure. I have absolutely no idea what you... Oh, I see you. Um, are you the store detective? You really didn't know. You didn't realise. Well, as a matter of fact, no, I didn't. You're certain of that, sir? Look, can we get this straight? Are you accusing me of shoplifting? You weren't given the chance this time. Fortunately for us. Right. What? Where you Please. are. I saw you. Please. I saw what you did. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, you get back Please. in there. Go on. Get back in there. That's oh, what's what's going you on? stand uh, there and don't you dare move. Yeah. Ah. I'm really yeah, we have it. Sorry. Oh, yes, of course. You're sorry now. Well, don't you think you're rather overstepping the mark? This individual's a shoplifter. Caught red handed. Yes, all right, but I mean, is it necessary I'll to pay for me? Please let me pay for these it's things. It's a bit late in the day for that now, isn't it? Yes. You should be thoroughly ashamed of yourself. A man of your age, you should know better. You should be setting an example. Yes, all right. Well, I think you've made your point. Leave this to me, please, sir. <laughs> Come on, enough, sir. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, bring on the tears oh, now. Oh, stop this now. Come on. <laughs> Stay out of this, please, sir. It's none of your affair. Well, look what you're doing to the man. <laughs> it's absolutely monstrous. He brought it on himself. But he's an old man. <laughs> That's what you know, right? What's whatsoever to treat him like this. Are you two in collusion? I beg you not. Is this man your son, or...? Your, your friend or associate or so You know him, don't you? You're crazy. It's an old trick. You distract my attention while your friend here pockets the goods. Whoever would suspect a white-haired old man? Look, where's... I want to see the manager, please. <laughs> Am I right? You transferred here shortly after Inspector Widdop arrived? Yes. He was a good boss, Bill Widdop. He knew his men. Grand copper, that man. So I've heard. Right. It'll all be a bit strange at first, Ted. You must expect that. Take time to adjust, I expect. No doubt, ma'am. But you'll have plenty of time for your fishing now. Not really. I'll start my new job tomorrow, you see. Tomorrow? Huh. Don't let the grass grow under your feet. Best way. Oh, certainly, certainly. You're going to a job at Hubbard's, aren't you? Mm, that's right. Checking over there as store detective. Still a policeman, then, of sorts? Of sorts. 
Well, I hope you'll be very happy there. Enjoy your retirement. Thank you, ma'am. And if you ever feel like a chat or a cup of tea, you know where we are. I'll bear it in mind. I'm having a small do. Just a jar or two um, over the road tonight. If you'd care to join us. Oh, I'd love to. It'll be a, a brief affair. I'm not one for these long-winded farewells. Besides, I've got to be on duty at nine sharp in the morning. Of course. It's business as usual for us all tomorrow. He was an old con, this fella, right? He's got this bright young daughter with a degree in law. So, he's up in the charge of burglary. This is one of your prolonged jokes, is it? Just listen, will you? Right, so this daughter has... With the degree in law. Right. She tells him to plead not guilty and grounds a diminished responsibility. So the old con elects to go for trial by jury. Diminished responsibility, says the judge. A bit startled, like, you must be out of your mind. <laughs> Irish judge, was he? Oh, Must have been an Irish sorry, con as well. Oh, yes, Mrs. Fletcher. Morning. I see. And you're prosecuting? That's for certain, is it? All right, we'll send somebody over. Yes, Mrs. Fletcher, right away. Mother Fletcher's dangling another scalp. And who's Mother Fletcher? You're about to find out. Shoplifting arrest. Hubbard's in the high street. Attend. Such. And watch yourself, lad. Young men have been known to return never to be quite the same after a session with Mrs. Fletcher. Sounds nasty. She is. I want to know. Now, just... Uh, am I to be included in the arrest? No, 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 no. They no, were no. in it together. Oh, for two bars of chocolates and a packet of peanuts. Hardly criminals, aren't we? You didn't mean it. I fully accept there's been some misunderstanding here. I don't know what came over me. I honestly don't. Momentary lapse. Didn't realise what you... Oh, I've heard that one time Look, enough. Don't you think you've done enough to this man? What will my wife say? You should have thought of that before. Mrs Fletcher. Please. Please don't tell me. It's all right, I don't well, worry. Well, she's bound to know when you come up in court. Leave it, please. I'll handle this. What is it, Mrs Collins? There's a policeman here, Mr Rutherford. Did you call the police? Of course. asked you not to involve them without first consulting either me or Mrs. Collins. Ah, Constable. Mr. Darley. These two men were involved in a shoplifting incident. Now, just wait a moment. Well, are you sure of that, madam? What do you mean, am I sure? This man is the husband of Inspector Darby of Hartley Police. I really do think you owe this gentleman an apology. It seems I was mistaken. Mr. Darby, I can't say how sorry I am under this. Yes, all right. Uh, what about our friend here? Mr. Gilbert will be prosecuted. No, there will be no prosecution. Excuse me, Mr. Rutherford, I insist. It is not your place, Mrs. Fletcher. He stole those articles right in front of my nose. Possibly so. He's but... admitted it. You heard him. I want him in court. Will you please leave this office and return to your duties? Oh, Constable, there's been a mistake. You shouldn't have been called in. We don't wish to press charges. I'm sorry, sir. A complaint has been laid, and I'm obliged to record it. This is uh, most unfortunate. Oh, Mrs. Fletcher acted out of turn. We don't wish to make an issue of this. This gentleman was detained in the street with items he hadn't paid for, yes? Well, yes, that's it. Then this incident has to be reported to my superiors. I want to hear Mrs. Fletcher's account made in front of the gentleman here so that he's familiar with the details of the accusation. I am aware of the procedures. Right. Oh, uh, I don't think we need to keep Mr. Darby any longer. What about Mr. Gilbert? I'm afraid he must stay here a bit longer, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, in the meantime, I think you could do with a cup of tea, don't you? What are you doing employing a woman like that? She's a monster. Mrs. Fletcher's been with us for very many years. My father employed her originally. Very effective. She saved this store many thousands of pounds over the years, but hardly the image for the friendly family store. The pensioner has admitted it, but the store don't want a prosecution. They just want us to do their shouting for them? Not really, Mum. He's not come to notice before. They'd rather forget the whole thing. Then why tell us? It's a mistake, apparently. The store detective acted without authority. It was Mrs. Fletcher, Fonders, Mum. Mrs. Fletcher? I see. 
I doubt if we'll have this problem when Ted Williams takes over a job, ma'am. Very well, David. Put in your report. I recommend no further action. The store aren't bothered. Why should we get excited? It's their profit margin. The amount involved is irrelevant. He's a thief. A pensioner. Probably a bit hard up, you know how There's it is. There's right and wrong, and wrong must be punished. Mrs. Fletcher. Oh, when? Why don't you ease up a bit, eh? This is your last day here. I would have preferred to work till Saturday. Uh, no, that's very generous, but it's the end of the month, and we've a new man starting tomorrow. I'm prepared to show him the ropes. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. Well, what time would you like me to come upstairs this afternoon? Ah, um, well, I, I do believe both Mr. Richard and uh, Mr. Charles are in conference all day. I see. And Mr. Derrick is on holiday. I know about Mr. Derrick. But I shall be here, of course, to see you before you go and wish you well. It is unfortunate, most of the directors being tied up on the day you're leaving. Not my choice. Retirement's been forced on me. It's the store's policy, Mrs. Fletcher. All female staff have to retire at 60. But, um, come and see me before, uh, well, at, uh, five. Come and see me then. Well, you're the manageress. I leave these things to you. Well, frankly, I haven't given it a thought. Well, can't you rustle up something this afternoon? She's been here 25 years. She can't just leave empty-handed. Mr. Rutherford, nobody's going to contribute towards a retirement present for Mrs. Fletcher. Everybody hates that dragon. Half the girls are terrified of her. She hasn't got a friend in the place. Here we are. Good. Well, Gwen, on behalf of the directors, I should like to thank you for all the work you've done here. <clears throat> Your uh, services will always be highly valued. And, uh, well, here's uh, oh, a little something. A small token of our appreciation. Have a very long and uh, happy retirement, Gwen. Best wishes. Made any plans at all? No, I've no plans. Oh, well, you've uh, plenty of, uh, of time now. Well, I should run along now, Gwen. Nobody's going to mind you leaving early on your last day. <laughs> no. Is anything wrong? I'm a little surprised, Mr. Rutherford, that's all. You're surprised? Yes. I understood it was normal practice for an employee with as many years' service as mine to be invited upstairs for a glass of sherry with the directors on the day they retire. Well, they'll all be very sorry to have missed you, Gwen, but as I explained... Last week, Miss Scott left to get married. She'd been here ten years. She was given a big send-off, wasn't she? A wine and cheese do in the canteen. The staff clubbed together and gave her a set of silverware. You made a speech. Oh, Jennifer was a very popular girl. I know well enough what some of the young girls think about me because of the job I've done. But this kind of treatment I did not expect. I've worked in this store for 25 years. Without a day's sick leave, I've given up my holiday entitlement when it was necessary, the busy periods. I've dedicated my life to my work here. Your work will always be greatly appreciated. And the best you can do for me is a shop soiled box of chocolates. Gwen, I... I don't know what to say. There's nothing you can say. It's an insult. I should have preferred nothing. You didn't even bother to remove the price tag.
Well, have you got nothing to say? Yes. Is the Queen coming to tea? Well, it took me a bit of effort all this, you know. I can tell. You daft ape. Am I forgiven? Mmm. What's cooking? Kebabs. Are you sure? Is that wise? Well, you cheeky so-and-so. I've even made some hummus and this wet scene is a drink. A Greek evening, in fact. And happy birthday, heartbreak. Is this Greek too? Actually not. Mm, not perfume. Feels like a big sausage. A bit hard for a sausage, though. Yeah, it's not a sausage. Very phallic. It's a bit too early for that sort of talk as well. Well, come on, open it. Well, not like that. It took me 15 minutes to do it off. But he's an antique shop. What do you think? Make a good rolling pin. Among the shops said it was used by the Bow Street Runners. All of them. Don't you like it? It's grand. I've always wanted one of these. I thought it was sort of symbolic. Yeah. It's lovely. Very good. I'll hang it in the hall. Didn't shoplift it by any chance, did you? You heard about that, did you? It was mentioned in passing. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Your first day, Mr. Williams. Oh. That's right. Uh -huh. You look like you're on duty. Now, beware of rich old ladies. They're a dangerous breed. Thank you. And remember, it's better to deter than detect. So, when you arrest, make a bit of a fuss, make a, a stir about it. That way, other customers who might have funny ideas will be warned off. Hmm? Oh, yes, Ender. Keep an eye on the steely goods, as we call them. That's the small, expensive items. And a young girl assistants, you know, watch out for them. I've had my eye on that one over there for weeks now. She's pocketing, I know she is. But she's a clever little trollop. Cat Mrs. Face. Fletcher, yes. would you mind letting me get on with it? I don't need advice. I've been a copper too long. That's obvious. I mean, it's no good standing about like some great pudding for all the world to see. Any good shoplifter would spot you a mile. What is this? What is she up to now? I'm hmm. Mrs. Fletcher, something I can do for you? Just looking around. Well, I can see that. Christmas shopping. Well, thought I'd start it early this year, avoid the rush. Something wrong with that? No. If that's what you're doing. Only you've been here several times this week, almost every day, in fact. It's as if you've never left. Well, it is the only department store in town. There's not much choice for shopping here in Hartley. Yet you never seem to buy anything. I have to be careful with my pension. I see. This arrived this morning, marked personal, addressed to you by name. Mm. We were going to forward it, but you'd better take it since you're here.
Why bring this to me? Why? Because I want something done. What exactly? I want that woman brought to book. On what grounds? Writing that filth. There's a law against poison pen letters. But this isn't a poison pen letter. It's a straightforward account of events. It says that following the incident at the store, Mr Gilbert suffered a minor heart attack and spent several days in the cottage hospital, that he's still in a very weepy, emotional state. His doctor has had to prescribe tranquilizers. And she blames me. No, not exactly. She asks if you don't feel at all responsible over what happened. She has no right to suggest that. There is nothing here that warrants police action. If you want to take this further, get a solicitor to write a letter asking for an apology. I can't afford a solicitor on my pension. We can't help you. I meant to go around to this woman myself and give her a piece of my mind. Her husband is a thief. She conveniently overlooks that fact. If you want my advice, you'll forget this. Mrs Gilbert seems to have enough troubles to be going on with. No longer employed here. You have no function. Well, that brickhead proved incapable of nabbing the girl. <laughs> Look at him. I gave you fair warning, but oh no. Mrs. Fletcher, I will not tolerate your coming here and disrupting the working routine of this store. So that's the thanks I get. I've just done you a favour. It's nothing whatever to do with you. Not anymore. Mr. Williams here is now the store detective. And a fat lot of you. Go away, Mrs. Fletcher. You have no place here. You're not wanted. Inspector Lincoln will be down at the station. This way, please. Just what are you hoping to prove? Trying to be one up on Mr. Williams? Prove that you're the better detective? Oh, that wouldn't be difficult. Or are you getting your own back at the store over the way you treated when you left? Who told you about that? Well, what's going to happen? Am I to be charged? Not this time, no. You gave many good years' service, and the store are not anxious to see you prosecuted. Oh, very noble of them. But if you don't stay away in future, steps may be taken. Stay away? From the store? I mean just that. I can't. Why can't you? It's my place, the store. It's where I belong. Why do you keep going back there? I have to. Have to? I don't know why. It seems to... It seems to draw me, draw, draw me back. But you left over three weeks ago. You've retired. Oh, I pensioned off, put out the grass. You're not liking retirement? Well, <laughs> how am I expected to spend my days? You tell me. Watching the sun fall in the afternoon sky like the old men in the park? No, madam. And so you go back to the store? Oh, they don't want me, I know that. I'm a leftover, dumped on the rubbish heap of no further use. Nobody needs me, not now. You're a widow. Jack's long dead, I. Twenty years dead. So you've no one? There's Kate. My daughter, Kate. I haven't spoken to her for ten years. She in Hartley? Mm. She hates me, my little Miss Kate. Oh, she said so, quite plainly. Why does she? I'm not approved of, madam. Oh, no. She was ashamed of the job I did. Wouldn't even invite me to her wedding. The things I taught her, she... She trod on. Decency, discipline, respect, the difference between right and wrong standards. 
The ways I'd bided by all my life. My Katie turned her back on. Oh, yes, too stuffy for the likes of her. <laughs> I reared that girl in upright Christian values, and in the end, she hated me for it. Perhaps she didn't mean it, not deep down. Folks sometimes Most say things that... Most definitely, she hates me. But I'm used to that. You could be a grandmother by now. Ever think of that? I couldn't care if I am. Are you a churchgoer? Involved in church activities? Not anymore. Jack showed me the light there. God gave us the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal, that, that's one of them. They're quite specific, madam. A code to live by. But a church... Oh, no, the church says, no, he didn't mean that quite. He must have meant this. There's the Old Testament and the New, so we have to alter things, bring it up to date, yet there it is. Ten rules, disciplines. The Lord said, these are my commandments. Commandments, madam, he used the word. It means something. Laws to be abided by. Break them and you'll land in hellfire. Have you no outside activities, hobbies, interests? I must be kept here. No. I'm free to go. Yes. Uh, who's your doctor, love? Edwards in Castle Street. Seen him lately? I well, should I have not ill. I think you should go to him. Today. Go today. He'll likely give you something to settle you down. I don't need settling down. Obviously, you're having problems adjusting to retirement. Suddenly, you're in a vacuum, without a daily routine, nothing to fill your time. It's common enough. Is it? I think so. You make it sound all very straightforward. I don't need any advice from you, thank you very much. <laughs> I've been a policeman for 200 years. Would you just think you have my friend stood up there like a militia beacon? Couldn't have that little trouble though, could you? No. <laughs> don't. 
scratch your head, and you'd find splinters in your fingers. I found your front door open, though. <laughs> stole all these things. Over the past three days, shoplifting at the store. He couldn't catch me, didn't have a chance. <laughs> because, you see, I know all the tricks. 25 years of, 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 of trick. Only, I wanted to be caught, arrested. I, I wanted to be found out. So today, when <laughs> I made sure I was. <laughs> you must come with me, love. Oh, yes, yes, I know I must. Yeah. I sat in that house for, for days on end. I kept seeing these faces, face after face. All the folk I'd arrested through the years it all kept coming back to me, the hysterics, the, the, the times I got punched and spat on, the bleeding hearts, the ones that tried to bribe me, the excuses and the tears, the, the appearances in court. It, it all kept going through my head. Uh, uh, when I was working, you see, I never had time to sit and think. The past just rolled up behind me like a carpet, but suddenly, and there's nothing else. I... Why did you become a policewoman? Fancied the uniform. Oh, tripe. I wanted something positive out of a job. I applied once. No good. I see. So I took this job as, as a star detective. Oh, and I knew the directors didn't have much time for me. They saw me as a necessary evil. I mean, I saved them money, <laughs> stopped some of the thieving. But to me, standards had to be upheld. Badness had to be punished. And that was my task there. Do you see that? I think so. I've never done anything wrong in my entire life until three days ago. I've never taken anything that didn't belong to me. I've never told an untruth. Then you're quite exceptional. I obeyed God's laws. Jack taught me Christian values, and I tried to uphold them in my job. Oh, and, and I knew I wasn't popular. Well, you don't expect that. It shouldn't be easy. But then when I left, well, they, were, they were so unkind. I mean, I, I, I did what was right, and, and I thought, how could they treat me? I, and then I got that letter. Well, that old pensioner, I mean, he stole things, and that was bad. Yes? But that letter, the things it said about me, about me harming that old man and making him sick, was, it, was that wrong? I mean, what I did, was it wrong? 
Not wrong, but perhaps you've been a bit black and white. Things are never simple. People do daft things. They make mistakes. I'm so confused. I... You've got to be a bit flexible, make allowances. I've acted badly. No, not badly, love. Not exactly. I thought I was right. I, I, I did my best. I did my best. Why did you steal those things? Oh. It was such a relief. Shedding old skin. It... Why did you do it? I must be punished. Punished? For the wicked way I treated people all these years. Must be punished. I see that now. That's why you stole? To punish yourself? My Bible, it... It was no longer a source of strength for me. I have to pay. Will you charge me? You must charge me. Love, I am making a note of everything you tell me. I shall ask a doctor to see you next. He'll make a report. And then... Will I go to prison? I don't think so, love. What will happen to me? It depends what's best in the light of the doctor's report. I'm like all those middle-aged women. Who shoplift to draw attention to themselves. A cry for help, they call. I suppose I'm a bit like one of them, aren't I? I suppose you are, love. Funny, isn't it? Well, I can't believe it. It's impossible. The value of the stolen goods is estimated at £1,200. But why? What's happened to her? She's ill. Very ill. She can't be left alone. She mustn't go back to her house. She must be looked after until her future's been decided. Well, I hope you're not looking to me. I only came down because... Because, frankly, I was so amazed. This, after all she's said and done, all she's held by. Your mother's in a very bad way. Well, I'm not crying. My mother. Well, I've tried with her. For years I tried to reach her. She's loveless. She can't love and she's incapable of being loved. All she was interested in was that bloody job at the store. Obsessed by it. I've seen her at work there. The grief she brought to folk over the years, the sanctimonious bitch. She's intolerant. So utterly intolerant. She's had simple beliefs. They've blinked at her. She put everything she had into that job and when it finished she was lost. Now she needs a bit of help. Well, she's not getting it from me. She is sick with remorse. Well, unrewarded self-righteousness, no doubt. Is that all there is to her? Can nothing be said for her? She's got guts, that's for sure. Takes some guts to live the way she has. She's believed in things. That's worth something. She's been completely misguided. She knows. Now she knows. It's flawed her. Your mother's in a bit of a mess. Well, there's nothing I can do. Nothing I'm prepared to do. I don't want to know. I found this in your mother's house. It's a birthday card from your father. Well, he's long dead. Your mother bought the card, wrote in it, and posted it to herself. We all need someone. I've got someone. Some days it's not much cop, other days it'll do, but he's someone. Gwen, there's someone here to see you. Constable, we'll be outside if you need us. Mother? Mother, I've gone. Mother, I've, I've come here.
You're to return home with me. Live with us until, until this is sorted out. It won't be easy. We both have to try. You know that. You haven't seen your grandchildren to date, have you? Two of them there are. Two girls. The right handful. Mother. Huh. <sighs>